Hello, welcome to another Impartial Theorist. Today we are in the depths of Wart, in the basement, in the back studio. It's pretty uh, bustling in here today with the pledge drive. Uh, every studio is taken up, so we're we're crunching it in here, bringing a new angle. Yeah, well, we're gonna start with Sam Nunberg, which, like, it faded pretty quick, but initially that was the craziest shit that happened this week on Monday, but, yeah. Then Sam Nunberg, there's a former Trump campaign aide um, who was fired in 2014 and rehired and fired in 2015, which that's like back to back, like, fuck you for Trump. He's a Roger, Roger, Roger Stone, like, he's a friend of Roger Stone and worked closely with him. And he graduated from some school in Long Island, some law school. He's, he's like, he's like Trump, basically, just like. A 36-year-old version of Trump, except not as rich as Trump. Yeah. yeah. And what he did was, the, um, Mueller, Mueller summoned him and subpoenaed him and had him answer a bunch of questions. And he he started freaking out because they asked him to provide every email from from Roger Roger Stone, Trump, and also Steve Bannon. And he just started freaking the fuck out, going on every single fucking like news news media like outlet to talk about it he went on everything from cnn to fucking msnbc everything except for fox basically you know and he, he had a bunch of interesting tidbits to, to, to provide yeah he's saying he's not going to cooperate with the fbi or Mueller on this investigation um Pretty bold move to say that on national TV. <laughs> You're being investigated by the federal government. <clears throat> but so then, what was the he? He said he doesn't give a fuck if they arrest him. And also, he said he ripped up a subpoena, which is also wild. That he could actually do it, but don't say it on national TV for the person who you don't want. Why would you? <laughs> He's so fucking stupid. And that, that was not even the wildest thing that happened. Apparently, he's done a complete 360, and now he's 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 going to appear before Mueller, I think, today. Yeah, and today is the... Ninth? Yeah. I should know that, but, yeah. Oh, yeah, so... Noonberg caps off Strange Week with appearance before Mueller grand jury. So... Rush, rush He's expected to, yeah, deliver testimony uh, Friday morning. So, yeah, this morning, March 9th. Also, didn't he, wasn't he checking into rehab? Yeah, but people forgot about that. <laughs> but, I mean, what, did he go to rehab? Is that... He could have gone to rehab in two days. Like... <laughs> well, what was it for? Because he was, he, he smelled like alcohol. One of the reporters straight up asked him on live TV. Are you drunk right now? And he, he did the fake, like, alcoholic. No, me? Shit, no. It's just my meds. Which, that's like one of the oldest fucking excuses. But shit. So I'm moving on from, we'll put some videos up, like, here. Okay, moving on from Nunbury. We move on to Wisconsin shit. Janesville, home of uh, Paul Ryan. DACA expired deferred action for childhood arrivals then back and forth trump is saying he's not going to renew it putting pressure on democrats uh first he said he would sign he had this like joint meeting with democrats and republicans saying he'd sign anything that they brought to him saying that he supported a bipartisan bill uh, it was like a couple days later he said he had these four principles that he needed in any immigration bill which included was it more military funding, the wall, funding the wall, um, reduced immigration for legal immigration, right? <laughs> um, anyway, all very unpopular things, and the Senate did vote, and even the, what was, of all the proposals that the Senate voted on, the ones that, with Trump's principles in them were got the least votes and actually got a majority against them including republicans so um it's been definitely a weird back and forth situation and uh the people that are left 
in the middle are the people of this effects childhood arrivals so um, there's some big protest plan uh, throughout the country house speaker paul ryan lives here and so local democrats and also democratic challenger iron stash as right. he's known randy bryce yep. who is a union iron worker who yeah like i said is a de democratic challenger trying to take down uh paul ryan they did an act of uh and we put up his picture right here he yeah. got he got a photo yeah <laughs> yeah so they did an act of civil disobedience him uh also a state representative joe casta zamaripa and apparently 21 other people all walked out into the street in front of Paul Ryan's office and kept chanting and whatnot after police said you have to you can't be on the street stay on the street they got arrested and uh, so yeah they're really trying to bring I actually did a story for this radio station earlier this week and talked to Joe Casta Zamaripa trying to talk to Randy Bryce I talked to his spokesperson but uh, Randy Bryce did not actually get back to me but um, yeah, basically they said it was to try to get attention and pressure on Paul Ryan, get people, Wisconsin Democrats to realize like, hey, this is a chance, especially people concerned about DACA uh, and wanting to preserve it, continue it, or support a comprehensive immigration bill. I mean, yeah, they basically joined in the choir that exists now, uh, it was constantly singing of uh, Paul Ryan's weakness. <laughs> that makes sense, but I mean, I just feel like everybody just talks about like what a coward, and, like how spineless Paul Ryan is about everything because he doesn't stand up to Trump. But apparently, he did stand comment on the he was opposed to the Trump steel tariffs. Because when I talked to Zemo Reba, she said like, well, he can stand up to Trump about tariffs, but why can't he stand up about? Uh, immigration bill you know so uh, yeah I guess it's something to keep an eye on um, will the iron stash take down Paul Ryan um, we have yet to see That's a poor star, dude. <laughs> there's, there's definitely been a lot of talk about it within the state and I mean it, it's got national attention too because you know Paul Ryan's not really all that popular in his district but I think I don't know I don't hang out in Janesville or scene too much, but it is definitely, there's definitely Trump supporters there, but I feel like there's also just a lot of people that don't vote, like don't care, and, you know, they, they've got to realize the power that they have, and so, hey, you know, maybe the Iron Stash and Sam Aripa got a few more people to wake up, so. Yeah, honestly, hopefully they do something about it, hopefully this this protest changes something because even though it was turkey is just a stunt because they knew they're gonna get arrested there was a fund they raised like six thousand something dollars and they, they the police weren't really gonna arrest the police haven't really arrested them they just kind of just put them in jail not, yeah not, yeah i guess it was like a mobile yeah. arrest or something like that they like held them in a van or something so yeah so right now it's, it's more like a publicity stunt and they're gonna get more people to look at this which is good and it'll put more pressure on Paul Ryan. But moving on to the next thing that... Yeah, well, I guess just a couple other things. So where DACA stands is uh, the there's been three cases brought to federal courts uh, to fight it, saying that, like, the way the White House ended it wasn't, uh, I don't know, constitutional or just, was, like, went about it not in the right way. And so that has, uh, last Monday, was actually struck down in a federal court but so there's still two more cases though so and like basically the judge said like he was unhappy with the way that it was going and like didn't like the white houses like he made a point the judge made a point to make that comment but just said that like it wasn't the judges or the court's place to be the politician there you know so you know i mean that that is how judges should be yeah, impartial still yeah so. But, yeah, if you come with a good enough argument. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, that's, but that's always kind of like the weird, I don't know, like, place you have to find in being a judge, I guess, is like, how do you, 
don't know. How do you measure the effectiveness of or how do you measure how how legal it is for you to to change these laws that are put together by politicians? Basically you're playing a politician. Yeah. Yeah. And they are allowed to opt out so shit. Well yeah, and then also as far as Congress working on a bill i'm not sure anything is in the works now i mean it's like daca expired it's basically still in place until i guess the courts hash out everything and then as far as congress i don't know that that march 5th deadline was kind of like the big pressure cooker moment but now it's passed and so it's like i don't know i mean at least uh yeah those people who are do qualify for daca still can continue qualifying but it's also still really up in the air it's like what will happen next so the next story is about a school shooting in alabama and this time two people two people were injured one person actually died and police are refusing no refusing they're declining to to say who the shooter was or what happened so that's just an update on another shooting that happened this week and there was also another shooting, a shooting that happened outside the White House. A man committed suicide. Should, we should call this a um, shooting watch. Shooting watch. A, a man fired a gun and committed suicide in front of the White House um, last week. I think March 4th. And the, the police came, cleaned up the body and all that shit. And it was, during, it was when Trump was tweeting about shit. I forgot what he was tweeting about. Like he was tweeting, he was tweeting whilst the guy was outside shooting. When the shooting, when the when it was live on CNN, that that shit was happening, he was tweeting about some dumb shit in his office. I wish we had done this last week so I would remember what this was. But yeah, that's those are the two shootings that happened this week. Guy pulled out a concealed handgun. Yeah, he was dead on the scene. So Arnie really shot his phone him. first and then shot him, and then. No, there was no suicide no but there was there was a bunch of shit um found in like a book on the scene and i finally they couldn't read it and that seems weird to me because why was why did he shoot his phone somebody controlling him or some shit it's like shoot yourself now do it do it and he shot his phone, shot it seems like an action movie sequence yeah <laughs> like some mind control he didn't want to shoot himself so he tried to shoot the phone and shut it off and it didn't work and the gun just you need to show his video yeah, I'm going to say either the guy, you know, thought he was being mind-controlled or just straight up was being mind-controlled. Yeah, so. his wife shoot the phone. <laughs> it's one or the other. Yeah, well, shit. Sure. Yeah, that's Anything some, that's can happen nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> well, moving on to the next year, which is Trump's tariffs. <laughs> and the, the shit that's changed between last week and this week. Yeah, so last week we just basically talked about um it was shortly after trump had announced just kind of out of the blue well i mean i guess he had talked about it and it's like been kind of a part of his campaign but just it finally just came out of the blue uh that he's going to be putting tariffs on aluminum and uh steel or aluminium as the rest of the world calls it uh but um yeah, so the debate has definitely started. Uh, a lot of people around the country, including many conservatives, including our Wisconsin governor, have even and our uh, our Republican Wisconsin governor and our Republican uh, senator, yeah, but said that they don't support it. Uh, Trump Trump sued the people's like worries by saying, and I'm quoting here: "Steel is steel. You don't have steel. You don't have a country." And I guess everybody calmed down. So. Yeah, well, so, they, I mean, they've said a few things, like, yeah, steel, you have to, like, without steel, you don't have national security or something, or you don't have a powerful military effort, some things like that. Um, just a bunch of and cash then I've heard the downplay of it, that it's just, you know, it's, like, such a small part of the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, but... It affects everything. Yeah, and so, yeah, actually, I was listening to NPR this morning, and uh, the Wilbur Ross, who, he's Trump's... Something... Yeah, he's Some the one that looks like a turtle. Economic, yeah, 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 something advisor, I think, and then and he's the one that 
Well, he was he was on NPR this morning supporting it and saying like, oh yeah, we're talking about two tenths of one percent of the economy, something like that. And he like, was it the shit with the can, with the Campbell's can of soup? They talked about I, they did talk about cans, I think. But yeah, they were saying like, oh, like this isn't gonna make. Like if we're talking about people living paycheck to paycheck, you know, we're talking about like a few cents on the dollar. Like, yeah, is this really like gonna make cents. or break? No, nah, but that's on the can. He was talking about the can. Yeah. Yeah, and a few cents in the dollar is a shit ton of money. Cause well, yeah, it wants it all yeah. adds up. From how, how many cents? Because I, I think it was like nine cents. Nine cents of the dollar is fucking nine percent. That means sh- prices of shit is gonna go up nine percent. That's 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 more than a few cents in the dollar. But shit. Sure. Well. Well, yeah. So I mean, I don't know. Honestly, like to be real here. Nobody really knows how this is going to shake out because it hasn't happened yet. And, like, what is going to be the ultimate outcome? Because there's, right off the bat, people are like, hey, you know, Canada, I think, is actually our biggest importer of yeah, steel. And so and they said, hey, this is not going to work for us. And then, so I think Canada's getting an exemption. Mexico's getting an exemption. But, like, Trump also wants to renegotiate NAFTA and have that like be part of it but the European markets European countries are all still they're they're actually coming up with retaliation right now like what what kind of tariffs are they gonna put on U.S. goods um and so that's the kind of part that I guess is a little bit troubling because it's like well the trade war so if 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 that's it truly if it just like stops there if the trade wars don't stop there then if, Trump is gonna retire if it's like it. isolated then yeah sure maybe this could work out and it'll all be whatever it'll all blow over nah trade wars fuck everything up it's not it's not fun but yeah it does seem like people are saying though that something does have to be done about China yeah like, cause that's, that's China is flooding the market yeah. with steel and and yeah, so I looked this up earlier today, like Obama did something somewhat similar uh, in his first year. He put a tariff on Chinese tires and that, and it was like, cause of, I think American tire companies like came, were like saying, oh, like they sh- show the statistics like within the last like few years or something like China had like doubled their market share or more. Um, and so yeah, Obama slapped a tariff on there. It was like 35%, so it was pretty hefty. It's so, not just tires that, that affects that what that affected Chinese in, in China you can't have a company or a property that's owned all by foreign people it has to be 50% at least Chinese so Elon Musk tweeted at Trump and he read that shit during a press conference and basically Elon Musk was saying that that with China we, we that Americans are at a disadvantage because he he right now wants to open a, a factory in China and he can't get more than 50 he can't get more than 50% ownership and he basically wants what's a retaliation at that, because it's basically he's basically trying to get the tariffs set on cars specifically, yeah, especially Chinese cars, because because now China can China has been able to invest in. Off the top, I know three, three companies that they've three EV electric vehicle companies and with autonomous driving cars, that they've invested in over the past like three years, and Tesla who is like a main competitor to those people isn't allowed to build in China. So it's, it's not it's not a free market then. And that's when tariffs are useful to level the market up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, and also I know with smartphones, like China has taken over the Chinese market for smartphones because they have like, yeah, they have major advantages and like uh, other companies can't really compete with them. Plus and the market is so big. And they don't really uh, have copyright laws, so, like, yeah, well, Chinese, like, if, like, that's what, yeah, so they can basically, like, rip off all the technology, put it in their smartphones, and then there's no one that's going to, like, file a lawsuit in China against them. So, yeah, and then because the market's so big, um, yeah, I think it was Hawaii, I I don't know, I think there was another company too, but they had like basically taken over the Chinese tech market or smartphone market, which is probably like half of the smartphone market that yeah. exists, you know. So this is China has billions of people, so yeah. We're, we're moving on to the Infowars saga, which is how Infowars have been on the brink of getting kicked off YouTube, which would be fucking like I didn't think this would ever happen. 
even though Info Wars was really fucked. That shit they peddle is they basically just sell pills. That's what they do, placebo pills. But yeah, actually, it's so funny. Sometimes I like watch the uh, Info Wars videos where they like go out to protest. So is that guy? Oh, Joseph Watson. Joseh Watson. Yeah, 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 the yeah, British yeah. sounding dickhead fucking dude. Yeah, he goes out to like protest and like ask people and like tries to like. It's just annoying to watch because he like tries to make people look dumb, but it's like you're you work for Info Wars. Yeah. But no, that's what I see. Like people say they're like, they'll like say something about like the gay frogs or like yeah. say, and then he's just like, that's, that's, that's actually a true story. You don't even. Know. It's just that's, like that's that's the, the Obama turn off frog gay is the whole Info Wars. <laughs> that's not Info Wars. Comment again. That's how he sells so many fucking like <laughs> yeah, yeah. like posters and shit off that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to <laughs> Big Money Salvia. Yeah. <laughs> Infowars, they're known for some pretty crazy... Wild shit. Yeah, and, and Alex Jones, of course, everybody yeah. knows. And they recently got in trouble for for posting a video alleging that one of the Parkland kids was a crisis actor. And that was the first strike. Then they got another strike in one of their older videos. And then Alex Jones posted this weird thing on, on Twitter alleging that YouTube told them that they're about to be suspended the next day which YouTube said they don't fucking do and YouTube mm. basically um, did them a favor and, and put back their advertising rights but they only did that because advertisers themselves are pulling the fuck out of InfoWars um, there's a whole list of there's a whole list of people from um, Alibaba <laughs> which is so this huge um, it's like like eBay for Africa or Amazon for Africa. Oh, I've I've bought stuff on Alibaba yeah. before. No, yeah, not just Africa and Asia. Yeah. Yeah. And then Acer, Nike, Moen, Expedia, ClassPass, Honey. I don't know what that is. One Family, and a bunch of other places, which, which honestly I fucking support because if you get those motherfuckers off YouTube, it would, it would stop getting these old ass people like thinking that this shit is real. And yeah. They would stop buying these fucking placebo pills that if they just looked at themselves, they would see they don't fucking work. Okay. There's this picture that I've seen where it's like the before and after of him taking his pills and he like looks exactly the same. It's just like ones he's kind of redder, like. <laughs> looks like he just got a little sunburn. Like. And they look at that like, this man has changed from this to yeah. this. <laughs> like, is it the same fucking thing? But yeah, people just buy that shit out. I mean. I guess, like, you could appreciate the hustle. Like. No, at this point, it's just <laughs> dumb. I mean, it's sad, but... Like, when your hustle is this dumb, and people know that you got to switch up your hustle. Like... But no, what's weird, too, so, yeah, now YouTube is doling out strikes for this, like, oh, uh, what happened? Like, where were they out, or, like... Infowars has been the ones pushing like the 9/11 truther movement. The yeah, fucking forever the, since no, like, not just 9/11. They they did um the pizza gate shit. They did um yeah, but they also said the Handy, Sandy, Sandy Hook, Hook was yeah. staged. They, they, like, it's there's been a bunch of shit. Anytime some shit happens, they blame they they find some crazy. Yeah, shit. everything is a false flag. Yeah, that's what they always say. It's Which like, like shtick. Uh, what the fuck is a false flag? Like I understand <laughs> those are terrible. It means probably means some some shit, but they've hijacked that term, and now it just makes me think every time I hear that shit, that is some dumb shit. So some shit might actually be a false flag, and I'll just be like, nah, it's some infowars shit. Yeah, that's true. Because what? Because now because of them, I'm not not gonna learn what that shit means because I don't get <laughs> yeah, fucking infowars. It's not. And a good thing out of all of this is that they're one strike away, and all the advertisers all the advertisers have bounced. So now it's just up to the placebo pill buying people to keep buying the placebo pills, meaning they're going to push that shit harder, meaning yeah. they're not going to have enough time to talk about the other shit because we'll talk like five minutes and sell placebo pills for 30. So there'll be less stupid ass conspiracies because now they have to make more money. So that's a good thing. It's supposed to sound like, like this thing would like one hundred would be natural, and this is where we find the source that God made to transcend the new world order. <laughs> it should be coming up on the screen. Well, 